All right, so UI Toolkit has been released a couple days ago, so um, I'm going to do a real quick uh, tutorial here on uh, how to set up UI Toolkit in your particular game. We're just going to show off some of the features like uh, relative positioning that lets you uh, just make one GUI layout that you can use across uh, normal iPhone, uh, iPhone 4 with Retina, iPad, and even right on up to the desktop now with the latest release. So we're just going to jump in and run through everything pretty quickly here. Uh, with the same basic structure from uh, from the demo, if you've uh, if you downloaded it, uh, we're going to keep things real simple. It's just going to be uh, we got one script here, demo scene, which is just going to set up the GUI for us, and uh, that's really all there is to this. Everything else is just uh, you know empty folders here, pretty much. We got our normal UI toolkit material, nothing special there. So we're going to jump right into Texture Packer because uh, in order to be able to make anything uh, with UI toolkit. Uh, you're going to want to use Texture Packer. makes life a lot easier. I mean, you can do it without, but uh, it's really uh, it's really designed around Texture Packer now. So you can grab the free version of this awesome program and, uh, and just jump right in. So we have a default Texture Packer scene right here. And uh, there's a couple things we're going to want to change here on, uh, on the default one. First thing is we don't want it to auto-size. We always want to keep our, our width and height uh, the same. We're going to want to use square textures for these. Otherwise, Unity will uh, will go ahead and square them for us, and all of our texture offsets won't work. So this is going to be the SD version, so the low res version. So I'm just going to set that to a fixed width of 512 here, and uh, I have a, a couple assets I'm going to drag in. So all you need to do for this is uh, find any images you want, and you simply just drag them in here and Texture Packer takes care of the rest. It lines everything up for you. And you see we have a lot of room here, so this is the kind of thing where we might even be able to drop it down to a 256. And yeah, it looks like we can. Uh, I like to put a, a little bit of padding around these. Not quite there. No, it looks like, okay, so let's jump it up to 512. Looks like we don't have quite enough to pad this. Uh, just so you don't get any bleeding, uh, I usually just put a, a little one pixel padding around these guys. And you know, as you just saw, actually, Texture Packer, if you try and choose a size that's too small, it'll turn red here. So it'll let you know that you need to bump this up. So we're going to bump it up. So we have all of our all of our files in here. And the actual file names are what we're going to use in code to reference these. So uh, so just uh, it makes it real easy to, to, to remember what goes where in your UI. And you can get your art from your, your artist or whatever, and, uh, and you just use the file names directly. So the other thing we're going to want to change in here is we're going to set this to JSON format for the data format. And then we're just going to go ahead and pick a directory. And that's where we want it. We want it to go into demo scene sheet. And you can see uh, Texture Packer will automatically go ahead and, uh, and set up your sprite sheet too with the same name. So what we're going to do is just choose a we're going to do Command P, or if you uh, if you like to go from the menus, File Publish, and what that's going to do is it's actually going to output the sprite sheet for us and the JSON config file. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull a Finder window in here so you can see, and you can see our resources here, and we have this is the demo scene sheet that we just made, and. Uh, I made it to uh, app two x for you, so uh, just to in the you know, just to keep things flowing quickly in this video here. So normally, what you'll want to do is you'll want to make uh, a two x version of your sprite sheet, so uh, for use on Retina and iPad, and you could actually set the threshold in screen size when we start using the double resolution texture, and it's just the exact same texture that we just built. Just uh, I used. Uh, double size for everything on there. So with the, with the latest uh, version, uh, in order to get Android compatibility smooth in here, we had to make a couple changes. And one of them is you're going to have to jump in here and just manually change these to be uh, TXT files. The only way to load them as, uh, as text assets in Unity is if they are named uh, .txt. So uh, unfortunately, we have to go ahead and do that manually for now. Okay, so let's jump back to Unity. Okay, so we have just a, a pretty much a, an empty project. It's going to freeze up here a second while it imports those textures. Okay, so we're all imported here. And you know, normally what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, and set these to be GUI clamped. And uh, 
Occasionally, uh, Unity freezes up a little bit when you're doing these, but that's no problem. So we'll just go clamp that one. And going on to our 2x1, we'll do the same thing. And you'll notice this naming convention throughout UI Toolkit. Whenever you have uh, any, any of your resources that are going to be double-sized, we'll just always need to have a 2x as uh, the, the last part of their file name. It'll do the same thing for uh, font resources. It'll automatically load up the 2x font resources when you're on double resolution. So next thing we need to do is we need to set up our layer here so that we have a, a UI layer. And once Unity uh, catches up and we stop beach balling, then we'll be able to do that. Okay. And we're alive again. Okay, so let's go in here and add a layer. So we're just going to add a layer here and just call it UI layer. Okay, so in UI Toolkit, we want to specify what is our UI layer. So our UI layer set up as UI layer. So there we go. And that'll set it up so that the camera only sees that UI layer. So we're also going to want to go into our main camera and we're going to want to set the main camera so that it doesn't see the UI layer. And you can see it's already unchecked here. But yeah, you want to uncheck this if it isn't already. And uh, that way the, your main camera won't try and, uh, and display your UI. Okay, so we're all set. Now all we need to do is uh, start making buttons. Oh, I lied. There's one more thing. Okay, so in the UI toolkit here, you need to specify the texture packer config name. And uh, if you remember, we called it, uh, you don't even need to remember, it's right here. It's just called demo scene sheet. And uh, the UI toolkit will use the name of that to load both the JSON config file and also the PNG. And it loads it up at runtime so that uh, if you're on a, a retina display device, it'll only load the retina texture. And if you're on an SD smaller device, it'll only display the lower resolution texture. You can actually set the max width or height for SD. Now, by default, it's 960. And that'll make it so that on iPads and iPhone 4s with retina displays, it'll uh, it'll jump up to the HD textures. But uh, if you're targeting Android uh, and you want to put high res textures in there, you uh, you may want to bump that down to 800 so that you catch some of the devices like the the Droid X, for instance. But for now, we're just going to leave that at 960. Okay, so there's not much else we'll have to change in here. So at this point, we can go ahead and jump into Mono Develop and. All we need to, um, now one thing to note here is you're you're going to want to always put your UI toolkit initialization code in start. Now uh, you're you're not going to want to put that in a wake. Uh, the UI toolkit itself will use a wake to set itself up. So if you put it in a wake, there's a chance that the UI toolkit might not be set up yet. So just to be safe, uh, always uh, always be sure to put it in uh, in your start method here. Then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a play button. So we uh, going to jump in here and there we go that's all it takes to make a button you have a UI button dot create method and what it takes in is the standard image this is the image that's displayed when the button is not highlighted this is going to be the highlighted image and then a position and this is a depth uh, for now we can just uh, we could just ignore depth uh, depth basically is uh, if you're going to have different buttons and components that are layered on top of each other. The lower number depths will be displayed first and higher number will be displayed last. So if, uh, for instance, you had two buttons and, you know, a play button and, uh, you know, and a, an options button, for instance, and you wanted the play button to be on top, you would set its depth to one and you would set the options to two or more. Okay, so we added a play button. That right there, one line of code, we can jump right over here and there we go we have a play button displayed in the top left corner of the screen right at zero zero where we wanted it super easy and uh, you can see it has a highlighted state when it's clicked and that's it that's all there is to it to get uh, to get up and running so we'll touch on a couple a uh, couple of little things now too so let's jump back into mono develop and uh, you know, it's all good and well that we have a play button in here but um, about if we uh, if we go ahead and use some of the more fun features in here and we're gonna set the play buttons highlighted touch offsets to a new UI edge offsets 30 pixel size so what this is gonna do 
is uh, it's actually gonna gonna mimic what iOS does in that on, on the iPhone when when there's a button and you put your finger down on it you can actually slide your finger off a little ways and it'll still be depressed and once you get past a certain point that's when it it will go ahead and deselect and you can see what that does right here and uh, just to, to illustrate this even uh, even better what we're gonna do is uh, use this setting right here on the UI toolkit object display touch debug areas so if we set that to true you can see that UI toolkit will display uh, yellow boxes around touch areas and it'll also do it up here as well so you can see that when we touch it it actually the, the touch area expands and it lets us uh, lets us kind of um, keep things a little bit uh, more smooth for users who are on touch devices. It just uh, and it also feels a lot more iOS-like because I mean, this is exactly what iOS is doing.